You know, out at the SEMA show, there's such an unbelievable amount of top class cars. The sad truth is that after a while, you kind of become numb to it. Everything sort of blends in until you see something like this. This is TC Penix 58 Apache concept cameo pickup. TC, man. Hey, glad to be here. What an awesome job, dude. Uh, I have been personally following this truck for several years now, uh, from metalwork and primer to the finished product here, and it looks as good in person as it does on, on camera. And those of you guys who've been watching the Eastwood vlog, uh, the Road to SEMA vlog from the Bay One Customs website, you've been documenting this whole thing, haven't you, the build? Yeah, we started documenting about six, eight months ago. We tried to stream every week or so or every interesting part of the build and uh, got a great success with it. Yeah, well let's talk about the truck. Obviously it's Eastwood paint. Talk to me about the candy paint job. Well this is a full candy paint job. I did a, a base coat in a, a gray metallic, then five layers of translucent candy yeah. and three layers of clear to, to make this color right here. Yeah, now one of the things that I want to tell you about a candy, if you're not familiar with it, it's multi layers and it's very critical that you get everything to match. Your technique has to be perfect. So a lot of guys will spray the vehicle all yeah. together, all fully assembled, but this guy, this this nut painted this thing, exploded, and the color match is perfect. So congratulations, man. Your technique must be freaking awesome. Yeah, well, the candy's not that hard to spray if you pay attention. Okay. Get your gun set up good, don't, and don't run it. Yeah. Try not to do too big of an overlap. But if you just pay attention, you can spray this candy pretty easily. Yeah. So what about the clear coat? It's the, the Euro Clear, right? Yeah, it's the Euro Clear. We did three layers of the Euro Clear. Then we put on 13 layers of paint. You get a little texture in that. So we actually cut that with 600, mm -hmm. and then let that cure out, and then put on three more coats of you're mm -hmm. clear and over reduce it just a little bit so it'll lay on out and it yeah. helps on your final cut and buff. Yeah, and you use these with primer surfacers and the, all the poly primers Yep, and the stuff. polyfill, I love that polyfill. You don't get hardly any shrinkage from yeah. it. Goes on nice, cuts good and flat. Yeah, okay, well that's about the outside. What do you got going on under the hood? Well, let me show you what I got going on under here. Oh yeah. We've got a 383 stroker. We've painted it in the Eastwood candy. I actually cleaned this block down to bare metal, etched it, and put the Eastwood uh, sealer on it, and uh, did the tunnel ram gray in the valve covers with the hot rod satin clear. Yeah. And nice little motor right there. It is so clean, and you did such a great job on the jaded car with wiring harness and, and hiding everything. This is so spectacularly clean. But one of the things I want to tell the people that are watching about and get you to explain it is the bottom side of the hood. Yeah, under the bottom of the hood, they have a support bar that goes in here to hold the crown of the hood. Well, so I could eliminate that, I actually rolled a piece of aluminum on my English wheel yeah. and then etched it and glued it in place with a bonding adhesive. And then uh, that holds my arc. And then I slicked it and painted, did the full candy paint job inside the hood as well as the engine and the firewall and inside the cab and inside the bed. And yeah, and as you're talking to me, I'm seeing the hour meter running. How many hours involved? Total 5,000 hours. How many years? Five years. Five years, but not full time five years, right? Right. Well, we got several builds going at once. Yeah, and it, back and forth. But here lately, these last six months on the road to SEMA, yeah. it has been wide open trying to get this put together for the show. Five thousand labor hours. Five thousand labor hours, and and that's that's just the the work. That's not the mental work. The designing process. For instance, talk to me about the tail lights. Well, the tail lights is a mirror image of the headlight. The 58 Chevy truck was the first year of the dual headlight. So I thought I might as well go ahead and make a dual tail light. So everything you see here was designed after the headlight. How many hours in R&D here? Well, the first light I did, 138 hours. Golly. But once I made all my templates out of metal, uh, made them out of cardboard, I made the second one a little less than 30. Yeah. Now, while we're right here, talk to me about the panel gaps. The gaps on this truck are perfect, TC. How do you arrive at your measurements and things like that? Well, most everything I build, I've got to have a stopping point to help me make it. Yeah. So I, I usually make all my gaps at five millimeters. Mm -hmm. And I know if I have it within one millimeter, you can't see it. Yeah. So it gives me a stopping point to stop at for every one of my gaps. If not, you just keep cutting and straightening and cutting and straightening. He lost me at millimeter. <laughs> It looks great, dude. All right. Uh, what about the tag bracket? Well, when I got all this back done up and knew we were taking the SEMA, I put my license plate on it and it looked terrible on the back of this truck. So I thought, well, I'll make me a custom tag and just untake this one off and put yeah. it on here. And I thought, well, might as well make it flip. Yeah. Well, about 120 hours later, yeah. we come up with this right here. That is awesome. So this is a Cameo design license plate as well as a Cameo design truck, which is a raised multi-layered design. Right, right, with a completely smooth bumper and it's all custom stuff. But let's check out the bed. All right, cool. Okay, now if you notice, one of the coolest things about this is the level of the gate is exactly what it is on the pickup truck. Never mind the exotic wood. 
these trucks in 1958 did not fit like that. So tell me about some of your R&D in making this happen. Well, one of the biggest issues I had is taking a, the tailgate from a 90 to this level was easy, but having it go at the extended uh, lean angle, it was way much more geometry involved with making that height come out like it is where it is there. Yeah. But everything you see here is handmade from the pivots to the sides to every piece of it. And what kind of wood is this? This is Bavinga wood from South Africa. And it's the same wood throughout, the headliner. Yep, the headliner, yeah. yep. And if you if you have been watching the Road to SEMA blogs with Bay One Customs, TC actually shows you guys how he bowed the wood with steam to make the headliner this perfect shape. When I was at TC's shop, the first time I saw this truck, um, one of the things that I really noticed was the surround molding around the back glass. And I said, well, whose is that? What kind of custom treatment is that? But it's bone stock, right? Yeah, that's a factory back glass for this cab right here. Yeah, and that's a testimonial to the fact that you have blended high-end custom stuff seamlessly with OE stuff. So well done, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. Now inside it's all full custom too. Tell me about the console. Uh, the, can the console is one-off custom. I designed it after the top of the hood. is 3.8% down here on top of the console. The sides are the scale of the sides of the truck. Right in here in the center is the ignition key to start the truck up. These are my light controls, air controls. I've got a uh, coolant fan override master right there and glove box in the center and it is full Eastwood candy paint job. Now the air conditioning vents, I don't see them anywhere and I know it's got air on it. Yeah, when I was laying out the air conditioner vents I couldn't even find any air conditioner vents that I like so I decided to uh, make a lower vent that goes all the way along the side of the dash there into the bottom of the dash and it kind of frames the dash matching the top piece of trim on top of the dash and then I use this surface roll here for surface tension like an airplane wing and it pulls that air right up into your face just like it would do with a regular air conditioner vent. Incredible work, man. Incredible. Well, TC, every bit of this truck is just absolute fine quality finesse. So congratulations on an awesome truck and all the attention it's getting, man. That's great. And by the way, if you haven't been paying attention, the paint, the primers, a lot of the other detail stuff, this truck is all Eastwood products, Eastwood Custom Candy Coats. They were even going to name a color for it. So this is proof again that not only can you get professional results at DIY prices, you can get award-winning results. So man, well done. Thank you very Great much, job, Kevin. Dude. <laughs>